This short screencast is looking at um, correlation and giving you a bit of an introduction about what, what correlation is. Correlation is the relationship between two sets of data. So when we look at a uh, relationship between two sets of data, we look at one piece of data affecting another one. So you could look at um, the time that a piece of uh, some food is in the oven and the temperature of that piece of food. So the longer it's in the oven for, the higher the temperature is going to be. Okay, and that would be a correlation because the longer you have it in the oven, the hotter it's going to be. Um, with every correlation, there'll be two variables, so two bits of data. So in that one there, uh, two bits of data where we had the time that it was in the other in the oven and then the temperature. Another correlation might be time as well, and then um, amount of ice. Now, obviously. Uh, if you had an ice cube and you had it sitting out over the fridge and you measured the size of it and ran it over a bit of time, the longer it was out there, the smaller it would get. So it's a correlation, it's a relationship between the two pieces of data. If the relationship is strong, we say that there's a strong correlation between the data. So in stats, to be able to make predictions and understand about what's going to happen in the future, then we want a strong correlation. So one's definitely relating to the other one. So the ice one, the longer it's out of the fridge, the quicker it's going to melt. Okay. Then what we can do with that is we can then graph it. Now to graph it, we need to know the two types of variables have. We have one which we refer to as the dependent variable and one is the independent variable. So obviously the dependent variable is dependent on the other one. The independent, it doesn't matter. So let's think back to our one about uh, the oven. Okay. So the independent er uh, variable in that one would be time because the time just keeps on going and the dependent variable would be the temperature. Okay, so the longer the piece of food is in the oven, the higher, the hotter it's going to be. And if we plotted that over time, we could end up with some dots on this thing going like this. And if we had a lot of data, we'd find that we could get a thing that it kind of goes along these kind of lines. This kind of graph is called a scatter plot. So when you actually get that information, you would get it in a table, and one would be time, one would be temp, be one, two, three, it could be 30, 45, 52, something like that. So notice that you have the time, which is the independent variable, which goes on the x-axis, and the temperature, which is the dependent variable, goes on the y-axis. So one relates to the other. Now, we can measure the strength of the correlation. Oh, look at this word here. That should be measure. We can measure the strength of the correlation by plugging all the numbers into a calculator and calculating it. And this is called Pearson's correlation coefficient. Now, coefficient is just a number that goes between 0 and 1. And that coefficient tells us how strong the piece of data is. So the closer to a value of 1, not a value, a value of 1, the stronger it is. So if you worked out Pearson's correlation coefficient to be 0 0.95, that is a very strong correlation. Okay. Um, it can be positive or negative. Okay. So let's have a talk about what positive or negative correlation could be like. Positive correlation could be like our, um, our oven with the time, which is our independent variable across here, and the temp. Okay, and if we did that one and we graphed it, we could end up with a graph looking like this if we had a lot of data. And if we drew a line in, it would be like that. And that was what we call a positive correlation because it's getting bigger as time goes by. If we're going to redraw that and do the one with the ice. So we have an ice cube, and as time goes on, it starts off being big. As time keeps on going, it will get smaller and end up being going down to zero. And that would be what we call a negative correlation because it goes the other way around. Also, what tends to happen sometimes is we might end up having a piece of data that is way out here or way over there. Now these are referred to as outliers. Different from the outliers that you had in the data for your mean, median and mode, 
it is an outlier that it might be a statistical measure it could be a blip in what's going on and if it's statistically accurate enough we can get rid of it so we could delete that one there delete that one there and then work out Pearson's correlation coefficient to see how strong it is the thing with working out a graph of the scatter plot like this is that we end up with a line of best fit and with that line of best fit fit we can write the equation of the line And then we could also do predictions using that line. So all in all, correlations is really just looking at the relationship between two bits of data and then how we can actually use that um, to plot and graph and make predictions within statistics.